Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Lawn Feed Podcast. I am Andrew, also known as the Dad Bob Lawn, and with me is Chris Hope It's Mo Time and Vince from Rooted Lawn Co. Hello, hello. And after this podcast, be sure to go check out our website where we have some premium teas and other apparel that will increase the germination rate of your grass seed by at least 37%. Uh, not backed by any science, but I can at least guarantee you if you're sitting in a lawn chair staring at your sprinklers going with a cold beer in your hand, While you're watching your grass seed attempt to germinate, you will be looking real, real good. (laughs) Now, if you can't guess, we're talking about spring seeding today, guys. Uh, So in honor of springtime and warmer weather, smash that like button, please. And if you would be so kind, also after this podcast episode, if you could give us a rating on whatever podcast episode or podcast platform you were listening on, that would really help us grow our channels and be able to reach more people like yourselves. Now, before we get into the thick of spring uh, and spring seeding, let's talk about some dad wins and losses. We are all dads and we all have wins and we all have losses. Yeah. So if you're a stranger to this uh, podcast, uh, we do a segment called the wins and losses. And this portion is sponsored by Forefathers. It's a polo company uh, and they like to elevate the dad apparel for the do it yourself DIY dad. Uh, and they are notoriously known for their OG turf dad polo. Uh, you know, the one with the little mower and the stripes and the green. Yeah, the turf dad. So if you guys want to buy one of those or buy anything in the store, make sure you use our code, the lawn feed, and it saves you 20% at checkout. So uh, shopforefathers.com. And let's get into one win and one loss, Andrew. Yeah, so uh, I have a son. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that. It's not bad, guys. So I have so a son. Actually, Is that a win or a so loss? I, <laughs> yeah, so I have a son. It's a win and a burden in itself. Chris knows that, um, but no, this is actually a win. So my son, I've always tried to get him to do like the knuckles and the high five thing. Well, we are now to a point where every time I say knuckles, he says high five. We do high five. He says elbow, and we do the elbow. And now I got him doing noggin, you know, like the turtle from uh, Finding Nemo. So we do noggin. So we hit we hit heads very gently. I've made very clear we got to do that very carefully. And then he's also added in his own thing, which which he calls the boop, which after we do noggin, we also got to touch noses. (laughs) So it's a lot of fun. Uh, Every time I put him to bed, every time I, you know, tell him I love him, he does knuckles and he goes through the whole thing. Right. It's 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 adorable. Um, And my daughter naturally wants to be involved, too. So she is also on board with it. Um, But. I don't get to pick up my son very often or my daughter and son from school and daycare. Um, but yesterday I was able to, I got out of work a little bit early and my son's always so excited when he sees me instead of mom, just cause it's some, something different. Right. And he came sprinting over to me, which this daycare is in the basement of a house. It's like an in-home daycare. Excuse me. And, uh, the big gas I go down. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Uh, so you know, that's good. I have to go down the stairs to go to the basement and they have this gate that's kind of removable. So the kids don't climb on the stairs and he sprints over to me and his last step before that gate, he bites it and goes oh. face, goes face first into the gate, just bam, forehead first. And he kind of sits up and looks at me and he starts crying. I think it mostly scared him. And actually mom doesn't even know that story. So honey, he's okay. Don't worry <laughs> about it. But yeah, there's my quick little win and loss. And uh, yeah, my son, is the star of the show tonight. I love that. We used to, I did the noggin thing too with my kids. Um, so we have a noggin kiss hug going, you know, right before bedtime. That's our good night sign off. Uh, <laughs> so it's funny that you mentioned that. I had no idea that you did that. So that was, that was kind of cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you got to watch out for those steps and ice and all of that stuff. We're getting into <laughs> like the melting over here and it freezing overnight and all of that. Yeah. So spring is fun. Spring is fun. Um, I'm not quite there yet. You guys are ahead of me which is fun, but um, it, it's kind of go time, right? I think a lot of people are starting to plan their spring projects and plan, you know, w- w- okay, what am I going to do to have a better lawn? One, so w- when we get into, when we get into springtime, one main question uh, that is super popular is how do I prevent crabgrass? How do I prevent all of those weeds from coming up? But then also how do I do seeding at the same time? And the answer is pretty simple. It's that you can't necessarily do both 
at the same time unless you use the right products. So if you have put a crabgrass preventer down, um, it will it basically prevent you entirely from putting or a traditional crabgrass preventer, I should say, um, it, it will, it will prevent you from, from seeding. And the reason why it's because those pre-emergence will kind of put that vapor barrier around really anything, um, and prevent any future growth past that germination stage after, you know, the weed seeds and the grass seeds kind of spark that germination, right? Uh, most crabgrass preventers, uh, like I just mentioned, will prevent not only the weeds from doing that, but also your grass seed. So it's just really important to understand that. Um, using something like a selective herbicide, a um, popular one uh, with the active ingredient of mesotrione, um, that's popularly and most commonly found in a product like Tenacity, which is like a liquid. Um, there's a granular one that Scott's has uh, that that is also kind of acting as kind of like weed and feed if you would. Um, but mesotrione is going to be that active ingredient that only targets those weed seeds um, and doesn't necessarily tackle your grass seeds. So if you're looking to do both at the same time, it is possible. You just have to use that right product um, in, in that selective herbicide. Um, otherwise, if you use something else, you would be doing weed control versus a seeding project and kind of have to make that decision. So do you guys use mesotrione every time you seed? Are you guys at a point where that's what you do? I do. Yeah. For Vince. the most part. Yeah, I don't use uh, mesotrione. Actually, I used it once uh, on a renovation, um, but I, I really haven't. I just kind of did a seeding and just... Wung it. Is wung in a word? Wung it, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> I just wung it. So yeah. we're um, in an urban dictionary, that one for you. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. The one more question for Chris. 50 to 55 degrees ground temps. Where are you at right now, brother? Well below that. <laughs> You're below our air temp our our air te I can't even get a soil temp reading because we we're still underneath, you know, two feet of snow. And probably oh. a foot, foot and a half of snow. I'm sorry, um, buddy. So we're still frozen. Um, the, actually, technically, I don't know if we're frozen, but we're we're definitely, I think, still in the 30s. So. Definitely not pulling soil samples wah, like wah. I was today. That's for sure. Nope. That is definitely true. <laughs> we'll, well get hey there. Guys. <laughs> An another pro tip when it comes to seeding in the spring is before you start to do your overseed project, you're going to want to drop the mower down a notch or two uh, to cut the grass down a little bit shorter. That's going to allow your grass to take longer to reach higher heights, right? Uh, we don't want the grass to kind of shade out uh, the new grass seed that needs sunlight all the way down by the roots. So if you can cut it down lower, um, once you do hit it with the fertilizer, that's going to give all the rest of the grass that's already there a jump start as well and make that want to take off. So just keep that in mind because uh, you won't be mowing again for probably at least 7 to 14 days depending on your grass seed type because you want to give it a little bit of time after germination before you start walking on it and rolling over it with a mower, um, ideally. But uh, how do we go about spot seeding versus fully overseeding? Yeah, so um, I can take this one. Uh, there's two different types that you can essentially do. You know, you can spot seed or you can seed a larger area. Um, spot seeding in general, say there was a patch of snow mold, say that there's just a bare spot that never took from last year, or you didn't get around to seeding. Um, the one of the best tools that I like to use is a garden weasel. It's got a little bunt, it's got a little tines on it, and uh, you just run it back and forth. It tills up the ground, and and that's just it's loosening the soil. That way, when you drop some seed down there, you're creating a really good um, seed to soil contact. You can take the garden weasel again and uh, run it over there real lightly, um, just to tuck it in nicely. Some people like to use peat moss. Uh, I tend to stay away from that. I've had some some bad uh, experience with it, uh, dumping a wheelbarrow of peat moss on my renovation. So, um, yeah, you can use peat moss, sprinkle it on top. That's basically just going to be able to retain and help retain the moisture. Uh, yeah, salt, uh, salt bay, peat moss bay. <laughs> peat bay? Peat bay. So you can become peat bay. You can put a little peat moss down. And that just helps the retention of water for your, your seed there. So then if you want to seed a larger area, the one of the best ways you can do this, say you're going to do your whole lawn. You're going to want to find the square footage because that's going to tell you how much seed you're actually going to need. 
Uh, there's different apps you can use. Yard Mastery has an app that you type in your zip code and it shows your house. You can do different segments or you can use Google Maps. There's a measuring feature on Google Maps where you can just go out the old fashioned way and step it out. You're going to do length times width and that's going to give your square footage. So you found your square footage. You know how much seed you're actually going to need now. A few steps that you can follow, similar to what uh, the guys were saying earlier. Mow your lawn a little bit lower. Mow it a notch or two lower. Uh, bag it all up. You can dethatch as well. Dethatching uh, can be manually. There's dethatching rakes, or you can use a machine like a Sunjo or Greenworks. They have a dethatching uh, machines out there, and it's just pulling up the thatch layer, the dead grass, the debris from your grass. That way, again, you're you're prepping the the seed bed. You're allowing that seed to drop down into the uh, grass canopy to actually touch soil. Now, a little pro tip that I like to do is I'll rent a slit seeder. They're usually about 40 to 50 bucks from a local hardware store. Um, there is a seed tray that you can dump your seed into the slit seeder and then run it. A lot of professionals don't like using that. I agree. I will broadcast spread my seed and then I'll take the slit seeder over it. I'll go north and west. <laughs> Well, I'm directly challenged. I'll go north and south, <laughs> and then I'll go east and west. And then doing diamonds. You can do diamonds. You can do whatever you want. He's doing 90 degree turns out there. <laughs> you will see that as it germinates. But yeah, it, it, this slit leader is just, it has little blades on it, and it's going to go down to the soil, uh, it just scratches the surface, and gets that seed. Just just gives you a little bit more um, insurance on getting that seed down to that seed to soil contact. So now that we know about going uh, north to west, now we know all about how to put seed down in the spring um, and some details on that. But what kind of grass seed do people need to be putting down? Uh, I'm going to defer this to our, I hesitate to call him a grass seed expert, but he is far more versed in grass seed than us. So, so Chris, oh, talk to us a little bit about grass seed. Yeah, it's a it's an important decision. I mean, if you think about it, you if you're listening to this, wondering about one of these two projects, you likely have a blend of something in your lawn. Um, it, it's probably not just one type of grass. And so when you're when you're thinking about this, it is kind of important to understand what you're about to go buy, um, and then what type of grass it is. So what cultivar you're actually going to go put down? Because some some cultivars will perform better in other situations than other cultivars in different situations. They're just better suited in certain environments than and vice versa. Um, but the very first thing that you need to understand is what type of grass or excuse me, what, yeah, what type of grass is actually going to be best fit in your region and in your zone. So in the United States, um, we've got predominantly the three you know, the three zones, cool season transition zone, and then the warm season zones, all of which will have different kind of grass types that you can kind of put into cool season grasses can be planted in the cool season zone. And in the transition zone, warm season grasses can be planted in the warm season zone and, uh, you know, parts of the transition zone. And then there's a whole bunch of just local kind of, you know, you can get really localized and kind of make, make that decision. But Largely cool season transition or warm season zone, and you target those types of cultivars that will actually perform best in that particular area. Um, the ne next is figuring out what kind of environment you have in your yard. And this is going to be different for everybody. Is it in full sun? Are you getting eight hours of, of sun? Are you getting four to six hours of sun where you have actually some shade? Are you getting mostly shade where it's dense shade, clay soil, sandy soil? the whole shebang, right? You just kind of have to figure out what's going to work best in that environment. You know, for example, turf type tall fescue in a cool season lawn handles very well in drought like conditions. It's heat tolerant, it's stress tolerant, all of those things. And it handles well in certain situations where it might not in others or like a perennial ryegrass wood or wouldn't type of thing. Um, so on and so forth. And the same goes for transition and, you know, really warm season grasses as well, right? Or excuse me, warm season grasses and you know, using those in the transition zone. So once you figure out what is going to be best fit for you, now you have to kind of figure out what's going to fit kind of your lifestyle. Do you want a lower input, uh, you know, grass where you're going to not necessarily have to go out there and mow it every three, four days, or you can, you know, go on vacation and it's going to be fine when you come back, or are you going to take this more of like a passion project and actually, you know, kind of like us where we're out there every two days doing something to the lawn here, there, and you know, the other day. 
um, and and using it more of as kind of a hobby, right? Just kind of depends on what your input level is going to be, and then ultimately, you know, where you know you want to take it, um, and and so on and so forth. So to answer all of those questions, um, the, a good resource uh, for you, I've created a free guide. Uh, to answer all of those questions, at least for the cool season zone. Um, and that will bleed into the transition zone to help, you know, kind of point you in the right direction. Um, and then I give all my personal recommendations to, you know, my recommendations over at Twin City Seed, um, high quality seed, uh, blue tag certified, uh, elite grass seed, not filled with any of the inert matter coated seed, any of that, um, you know, fun stuff. So you're actually getting 100%, shouldn't say 100%, as close to 100% purity as you possibly can. Um, so lots of decisions there, um, to recap all of that, do your research before just going out to a big box store or going anywhere and getting your seed without answering at least a few of those questions to help really set you up for success in whatever kind of project you're doing, spot seeding, overseeding, full renovation, whatever have you. Yeah. Good stuff. Hope, uh, that, that grass guide that you made is, is pretty awesome. I've referred at least two people this week alone to that. So, um, really good work on that now now that we got our grass and we got it down now is the time that rewind a little bit you grab that cold beer you get in a lawn chair in your driveway and you wear your lawn feed swag and look stellar as you stare at your lawn that's being watered but we need to water our lawn a little bit differently since we just put down seed uh kind of traditionally with established grass you want to kind of go water maybe three times a week kind of deeper less less frequent now the goal here with fresh seed we need to keep that seed moist everybody hates that word uh, but that's the best way to describe it right it needs to stay wet so we need to water not just every day i'm talking like at least two times preferably three times a day uh just really quick you don't need to soak it you don't want to soak it you just want to keep the grass wet or the seed wet if you're using peat moss um kind of as a top dressing that's a really great indication of are you keeping the top layer moist enough because that peat moss will turn really light brown and dusty when it doesn't have enough moisture on it so uh, keep an eye on that and as things um, progress with the germination now you have grass seed that your perennial ryegrass might germinate in seven days but you might have also put down a kentucky bluegrass so it might take 28 days so you want to keep watering uh very frequently every single day until that Kentucky bluegrass has a chance to germinate as well. And once your grass reaches about one inch, you want to start dialing that back and maybe water once a day, a little bit deeper, and then go to every other day, a little bit deeper. And then finally, once it kind of gets established and you've mowed it a few times, you're going to have it back on your normal watering schedule. And if you're wondering what that watering schedule is, we have a full episode on watering. Uh, if you don't have underground sprinkling, uh, grab yourself a sprinkler timer that you can hook up to a hose like uh, what Melanor makes, uh, really super helpful. And it's going to make your life a lot, a lot easier. Pro tip. Whoops. You guys are going to be watering. It's going to be getting hotter, potentially a little humid. Uh, uh, thinking about humidity, <laughs> not ready for it, but I think it's... Chris is ready for it. <laughs> I'm ready for it, <laughs> but that's all a great, um, environment to, to produce some fungus. So, Keep an eye out on your new seeding. Uh, walk around. If you start to see some signs of fungus, um, some white patchy areas, some black areas, that's probably a, a good sign to say you need to put down a curative uh, application of a fungicide. Um, we do have, do we have an episode on that? Yeah, it's in yeah. there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, we do have an episode talking about fungus uh, and what we kind of recommend. So uh, be sure to go check that out as well. If you guys have specific questions about what we use for fungicides, uh, whether it's preventative or curative, uh, feel free to comment below and we'll try and get that answered for you. The one other thing I want to point out to you guys is, you know, and I, I, I neglected to say it on the seeding part, but there is such thing as seeding too late in the spring. Mm -hmm. Um, and you just have to be aware of the risks going too late into the spring because your grass seed isn't given enough time to physically germinate and establish to play defense in the spring to get through summer defense to play, uh, throughout summer, um, where then you're just kind of doing two projects, uh, the same project twice, three times over again. Um, we all know fall is best. Spring is definitely second best. I'm um, in a cool season in, you know, the zone. Um, 
we just have to set ourselves up for expectations going into spring. Um, seed at the right time, you will have success most of the time that you do that. Um, you just have to be careful and um, use your best judgment in terms of what's in the extended forecast. Now, real quick, before we wrap up, do you guys have spring seeding projects planned for either your lawn or a project lawn that you're helping somebody with? I do. I have a yep. 30,000 square foot uh, seeding project lined up Oop. for uh, spring. <laughs> yeah. Sheesh. Yeah, breaking cool. out a, a vent track and uh, all the big boy toys for this one. Is, is DTL helping you with DTL, that DTL, yep. Uh... Um, Total Turf, yep, out of Chester County. He's going to be coming up and... and uh, yeah, let check me out our episode there. with him, guys. We had a good episode with him on. So Chester we'll County, Chester, yeah, Chester County, Chester. boys. How about you, Chris? Did you decide if you're going to do anything? I know it's hard to decide with like three feet of snow on your lawn right now. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, well, yeah, it kind of depends on the snow melt. Um, to be honest, I, I've got two planned um, for sure. It's going to be my front, um, and I, I'll be doing a renovation on probably like a four thousand, five thousand square foot lawn. Um, not a full renovation, excuse me, an overseed, you know, kind of sure. transformation there. So yeah, we'll see. It, it's all dependent on the snow melt and how, how soon we can get out. <laughs> well, you right. can just, uh, replay this episode and then you'll be a professional when it goes to yeah. overseeding. There you go. There you yeah. Go. I, I got snow mold problems again, so I'm going to be at minimum spot seeding and I'll probably just throw a little overseed over the whole front lawn around it. But, but yeah, snow mold, snow Fun. mold, two years Never ago. Never uh, preventative fungicide next year boys in the fall i learned my lesson <laughs> should have learned it last year but i didn't but you probably just dumped the whole you know bunch of potassium on there just <laughs> yeah and i actually didn't put as much as i wanted to last year so <laughs> figure that one out but anyways boys this has been fun uh thank you to everybody for tuning in uh just a reminder hit the like button subscribe to our channels tell your friends about us if you can uh, we have we have a lot going on here at the lawn feed right now trying to get ready for this season for you guys uh, so stay tuned. Much more coming down the pipeline uh, this season. Check out our discount code Brad15. We'll get you 15% off our store. Dang it, for Brad. Some lawn feed swag. And uh, grab those lawn chairs in water and style. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye bye. See ya.